Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, and finding greatness. My special guest today is a graduate of Punahou School and she is achieving incredible success as an actor, singer, and model. She is Sumiri Matsubara, and today we are going beyond the fame. Hey, Sumi, how's everything going in Japan? Good, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, thank you for taking time to uh, join me on the show today. Of course, thank you for having me. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> I know that you're full Japanese. I'm half Japanese and I've been to Japan twice and it is, I absolutely love Japan. I wanna know, yeah. Sumi, what is it about Japan that you love so much? I mean, everything. <laughs> you gotta love the food, you gotta love the people. People are so kind and so polite. Um, the culture is so immersed and, and it's, and it goes back so far, the history and the culture. And it's, it's very, um, yeah, it's just, it's, it's just such a, a an interesting, um, beautiful place. I, and you gotta, you gotta travel along all around Japan. You can't just stay in Tokyo. You gotta go to Kyoto. You gotta go to Hokkaido. You gotta go see, you know, Okinawa. You can go everywhere and it's such a different place everywhere you go. So, yeah. Really I need nice. I need to go to Sapporo as well because you know that the yeah. the twice the two times that I've been to Japan I felt so proud to be Japanese. I mean you 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 said it right the culture and the people. I mean they're so polite. And Sumi, I know mm -hmm. that you graduated Punahou School in 2009. What are some of yes. your what are some of your high school highlights? My high school highlights well I received the president's award wow. as a senior. Yeah, and oh, that's my stepdad and my little brother. <laughs> nice. Um, and that is my uh, my acting uh, teacher, Paul Palmore. I think that he's still there. Um, and uh, my biggest achievement in Punahou was actually I um, I was work. I I, I did the uh, I did a play. I did a few plays while I was at Punahou. Um, but uh, my favorite one was West Side Story. I played Anita. Great. And um, that was my favorite uh, musical that I've ever done in my entire life. And I've done professional musicals after that as well. But that was probably my, my highlight of my whole, one of, one of the highlights of my whole life. Yeah. So you love performing in Dillingham Hall, right? Yes, in Dillingham. <laughs> Now, and then you, after graduating Punahou, you attended Carnegie Mellon University. Uh, what, what, what did you study there? I studied, uh, I was a double major. I was acting in musical theater, um, but I was there for two years and then a big earthquake hit Japan and uh, my grandmother passed away and my mother was going through some, um, you know, emotional um, changes and, and she was, going through a lot. So I came back to Hawaii after that. And I spent some time with my family, my mother mainly. And then I moved back to Japan to pursue a career in, in acting and in, in singing and modeling. Now, Sumi, your mom and dad, I mean, they, they were famous uh, people in Japan, uh, you know, when you were growing up. And how, what, what is it about your mom and dad that you learned um, probably like one, one nugget that you learned from each of them? I, I learned a lot from my mother because I was, she was kind of like a single parent. Um, my father and my mother split when I was young. Um, but I think one of the biggest things that she taught me is that I, you know, I need to just make my own decisions and be happy with them and really go for my dreams and, and to not give up. And um, yeah, she was always just so supportive of me throughout my life. And um, I've had some really big hardships about, you know, kind of my father not being there and um, a lot of 
things have happened in my life. Um, but she was always there for me no matter what. And, um, yeah, and it, and it really taught me to trust people and it really taught me to really be there for other people too when they needed somebody. They were both uh, actors in Japan as well? Yes. Wow, so so you got some, uh, some acting. I mean, that's really how you got interested in acting, um, is it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> well, since I was a little girl, my mom would take me to musical theater shows. She would show me some Disney movies. And I got so, like, I was so um, inspired by you know, music and by acting. And when I went to Punahou, I discovered musical theater again as actually somebody being in, in a musical theater show. And I got bitten by the theater bug, <laughs> is what we say, the theater in the theater biz. But um, but yeah, I, I just got so hooked on on acting as well. And then it was just, it just flowed from there. I just continued. Yeah, and so you had a role in season five on Hawaii Five-0, and then you you had a role uh, in the movie The Shack, and then you're also on Marvel's Inhumans. And how was it, yes. you know, doing all of those uh, different different shows or different movies? Wow, um, doing Five-0 was so much fun because I got to go back home and I got to be a bad girl. I got to hold a fake gun and shoot people. <laughs> and it was a lot of fun. Um, and I got to work with the best crew in the cast. And um, after that, I got my big you know, break in uh, The Shack. It was the biggest film or the first film that I've done ever. And um, it was really, just amazing. I mean, the cast and the crew were incredible. I got to work with Octavia Spencer, who I've looked up to forever, um, even before she won her Academy Award. And um, I got to work with Sam Worthington, who is a great, like kind of like, he was like an acting coach for me in some ways. Um, and he taught me a lot. And uh, yeah, and I got to work with some really amazing producers, um, the producers of The Life of Pi and The Blind Side were on that, on that movie. Um, so yeah, it was just an incredible experience. First movie experience, I think. And uh, we got to shoot in Vancouver in a beautiful area. And I got to play the Holy Spirit, which was the first time that the Holy Spirit of the Holy Trinity was being portrayed in the film ever. So it was a big, big honor. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely fantastic there, Sumi. And Let's talk about your modeling career. I mean, you are absolutely photogenic. I mean, so super photogenic. What are the best parts of modeling? Um, modeling for me is just really like a self-expression. Um, you just, you know, you can really express yourself. You can really show your clothes and, and in a beautiful way and you can, um, you can really, you know, show yourself and in a way that it's different from acting, I think, because you don't have words, you don't have your lines, you cannot be moving, you have to be still. Um, so it's, it's a very different um, type of, it's kind of like acting though, but it's, it's a different type of acting, I think. And, um, and it's just really a lot of fun for me because I get to just be myself and, um, or be a different character. So there's different types of modeling, obviously, but um, but yeah, I, I really enjoy it. And it's it's a way of me expressing myself. It's a way of me letting go of some things that, you know, that I've been thinking about or just like I can release and relieve stress and just just be. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, you're able to chameleate into so many different, you know, visuals. And I want to know, Sumi. What's the what's the worst parts, the ch most challenging parts of modeling? OK, the worst parts is that we have to be in a bikini in the wintertime outside um, in the snow. Sometimes we have to be in hot, hot winter clothing in the summertime sometimes because we are, you know, always reversed. So whenever we're filming something, we're shooting something for the winter, we're shooting it in summer. And when we're shooting something for summer, we're shooting it winter. So it's it's really hard to um, keep a straight face and not sweat 
sweat you know a lot or freeze and you know be, be shivering a lot so it's that's that's really tough <laughs> so it's not always glamorous right no it's not and sometimes <laughs> when you have to do makeup at like three or four in the morning you're not awake at all and sometimes you know i'm like trying to drink coffee and accidentally almost drank my my lotion or you know it, you're, you're just not all together at all <laughs> And Sumi, you have been on the cover of numerous uh, magazines, and I, you know, I, I mean, I want to ask you, Sumi, what what is the secret of being a great model during photo shoots? I think um, for me, as a as a like, well, I used to model, and now I I kind of sometimes model, but I'm not focused on modeling as my main. Uh, job right now but um, while I was modeling I realized that it's just so important to really um, be kind and polite to everybody who is at your work at your job which I think is applied to um, everything that you do everything that anybody does but um, for modeling especially because you really it's a team effort, you know, you have your makeup artist, you have your stylist, you have the photographer, you have the producer, you have the director, you have the creative director, you have, everybody is, is there to create something amazing together. So you really have to, um, you know, work together. And I think it's, it's, you never, you should never think I'm the star and I, you know, will, you know, be shining so bright and, you know, everybody will, bow down to me. It's nothing like that at all. <laughs> it's mainly actually the model has to work really hard to make everybody else happy too, you know, and I think, and I think that's so important. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big, it's a big team effort. And obviously you're very humble and you bring the aloha to, to each photo shoot, right? <laughs> yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so if, what would be two of the biggest magazines that you would like to be on the cover of? Oh my goodness. I would love to do, I would love to do Vogue, of course, in the States. And um, Vanity Fair is also a big one that I've always dreamt of doing because it's such a um, beautiful magazine. And um, yeah, I think those two are the biggest ones that I would love to work with one day when I get more um, recognition in the States. Well, I think uh, it could happen because you've been achieving so much uh, success and popularity. And in my books, Sumi, I, I talk about achieving and sustaining success. And you, mm -hmm. you know, in this, when you reflect back on your career so far, why are you achieving success? That is a very difficult question to answer. I think, I mean, I think it's because I've worked really hard my whole life and I never gave up. And no matter what hardships came my way, I would really try to take them on graciously and to learn from them, learn from mistakes, learn from the hardships and, and move forward. And, um, and yeah, I've, I've struggled with a lot mental health wise. I've struggled with a lot, um, emotionally because as an actor it's really hard to um you know be so vulnerable all the time and i think that we have to learn this um this balance that we i think we should learn in life as well to 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 balance emotion emotional emotion emotions <laughs> and vulnerability um and uh yeah, I think that everybody who wants to be successful in the business, in the entertainment industry, really needs to just study and work hard and do all they can and hone their skills and um, really be the best and the greatest at what they do. And, um, and that's, that's the best advice that I've been given as well. So, yeah, and yeah. Sumi, you know, I, I know you have high standards uh, for yourself and you have a great personal culture of excellence. And, you know, you mentioned that, you know, you work hard and, and you also mentioned some challenge, um, you talked about some challenges. What, what is one challenge that, you know, you really had to deal with that was tough that you overcame? Well, um, 
one challenge that I had to go over was, or had to overcome was um, the big earthquake that hit Japan. And um, that really, it really ate me up um, because I was so far away from my home in Japan. And I was in Pennsylvania, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at school. And um, this whole, this earthquake happened. There were so many fatalities. There were so many injuries. There were so many people who lost their homes. And it was a big, um, a big challenge for Japan, I think, to go over, to get over. And, um, and I was, I was so hurt and I was so, I was so affected by that because I couldn't do anything and I was so far away. And um, I realized that I wanted to do something and that's why I, I wanted to be in the entertainment industry in Japan and, and have a name for myself so that I could do something. I could do a charity, I could do, um, I could do a charity event, I can raise money, I can raise awareness, I can do something, I can do something more is what I, I've, I realized. And that was what I got out of that earthquake 311 hitting Japan. Yeah, that was definitely uh, devastating. And I like hearing that, you know, that insight about how you really wanted to make an impact. And let's talk about your, your singing career. You know, some of your music videos have millions of views. And how did you get interested in singing, Sumi? Well, I, I've been singing my whole life, just, um, just like any other little kid who would be doing, oh my gosh, that's, that's from Puno. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I grew up listening to Disney and watching Disney movies and going to musical theater shows with my mother. And I really um, just loved to sing and loved music. And I always wanted to be a pop star. That was my dream growing up. And you <laughs> I was are listening one now. to like, yeah, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> Um, I was listening to like Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera and just getting inspiration from them, like the pop, you know, sensation. And um, yeah, and I, and then I became a, a Japanese pop star a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, what I'm impressed with is you can sing in, you know, so many varieties of singing. I mean, it's, it's very impressive. You, I mean, you can do the pop, you can do the I don't know what it's called where you're just, I mean, it's so meaningful, but you're able to hit so many different notes. I mean, is, I mean, <laughs> how long have you been, I mean, you said you started singing, you know, early on, did you have singing coaches as well? Yes. I, um, I trained classically, actually. I was trained by, well, I was trained by, um, a, a, a voice coach and then I trained with an operatic voice coach as well. So I actually came from a classical background from, from middle school and high school is when I trained um, classically. And then um, when I went to college, I, went, I, was, I had a voice, voice coach then as well. And then I came to Japan and I still continued to um, train with my voice as well. Oh, see, everyone always needs coaches. <laughs> Coaching is, is yeah. always a necessary part of success. <laughs> yes, I mean I have acting coaches as well. So whenever I go to the states, I get my acting coaches and I have them help me as well. So, and Sumi, I know you love to dance and you love to perform. I mean, what yeah. is it about dancing and performing that you love so much? Dancing for me is also another form of expression, and it's just so like it's it's just it you can relieve so much you can release so much and um and it's just so much fun and uh and i've always I, I took ballet and it's it's a great form of discipline for young kids i think and um and it really helps you to hone down your skills and it hel helps you to it's a ballet is a basic skill so when you dance ballet you can dance basically any other dance um so it, it, it was a great stepping point for me and a great um, starting point for me to learn yeah. ballet. Sumi, you know, I want to ask you this too, you know, us being Asian, I mean, you know, in your life early on, did you ever experience any bullying? Yes, I did. I, I experienced bullying even in Japan because my, fam famous, my 
my parents were famous and I experienced a lot of bullying in that sense. But then when I moved to Hawaii, um, I couldn't speak English at first. So I was bullied because I couldn't speak the language. And um, when I went to um, school in the States, I felt very different because there weren't as many Asian students in, in Carnegie Mellon. And, and especially in my um, acting program, there weren't that many Asian students. So I felt very estranged. Wow, geez. So you, so after that, I mean, have you had any experiences of being discriminated against as well? Well, being in Japan, I don't get discriminated because I'm Japanese, but I do get a little bit of discrimination sometimes just because I grew up in the States and because I speak English and because I'm like international, I kind of act differently than the Japanese, like the normal Japanese person would act. So um, I definitely feel, you know, that I get treated almost as a foreigner sometimes, even in Japan, even in my own country. Uh, so obviously you've heard of the world famous tennis player, Naomi Osaka. Yes. And I, you know, I, I mean, I think she's, I mean, similar to you too, because, you know, she's grew up, you know, in Japan, but in the United States as well, and kind of caught in between. I mean, what, what advice would you give to someone like Naomi? Oh, I mean, I don't think I can give advice to Naomi because she's probably dealt with much more, um, you know, of, of that than I have. And I think that she's probably much stronger than I am. <laughs> I mean, she just seems like a very strong woman. Um, but uh, I guess like my advice to anybody who would be going through some sort of discrimination or bullying, especially cyberbullying, because I've gone through that as well. Um, I think it's just, you have to really think that that person was not educated the way that you have been educated. Maybe that person is going through something really difficult, such as their, their family, somebody passed away or somebody has a disease, or maybe they are going through something in, in themselves emotionally or, or physically or, or mentally that they cannot deal with. And so they take it out on somebody else. And so you really got to, I think, pity that person a, a little bit and, and think that that person, you know, and you have to just really empathize and sympathize with them and, um, and just try to see it from their point of view and try to, try to um, yeah, try, try to empathize with that person. You know, a few years ago, you were honored and received an award at the Asia World Film Festival. And yes. I felt so happy for you that, you know, you were recognized for all of your efforts that, you know, what you're doing with your with your career. How did it feel to be among the, some of the best Asian actors uh, in in the world at that event? I was very honored as you said <laughs> and um it was my first award ever it was my first film ever so i was very taken aback that i was even um invited to that uh event and um and nevertheless receiving an award receiving the um the rising star award which they um they were so gracious enough to to give to me and um and I was just so, you know, happy to be there with amongst amazing actors, amazing Asian actors, um, people who are helping to represent us well. And, um, and it was such an honor to be there. And it was, it was so much fun. And, and I got to see some friends as well. I got to see some people that I knew as well. So that was really nice too. So being able to travel the world and, you know, going to Italy and doing all these fashion shows how are the parties, like the Bulgari parties or the Dior parties, are, are they fun? Yeah, um, <laughs> of course they're fun, but they're also very nerve wracking because there's so many beautiful people. There's so many people that are just very elegant and you feel like you need to like be on your game and you have to be perfect sometimes. <laughs> but it's really fun and, it's, and it's, it's just so glamorous. That world is so glamorous. Fashion industry is 
is very glamorous, I think. And sometimes backstage it gets very cluttered and very crazy, but, um, but for the parties, I think it's just, it's the time for you to relax and it should be a time for you to let go and have some fun. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully you can relax at those types of events. But I can I can see how stressful it would be. It's interesting to see that perspective as well. And Sumi, I want to ask you, what's a what's a valuable lesson you learned in your life so far? Mm, A valuable lesson that I've learned. Um, I mean, I've learned so many lessons in my life, but I think the biggest one is just to to be kind to to one another no matter what and i think after you know seeing everything that's going on in the world right now with corona with with the discrimination with with you know cyberbullying in japan at least there there was a big um, there was a big story about a girl who committed suicide from cyberbullying i think it's just um, a lesson that i've learned is like you have to really be kind to whoever that you you bump into because you never know what they're going through. And you have to assume that whoever you see, whoever you meet might be going through something really hard. And, um, and just to be just gracious to them and kind to them no matter what. And um, yeah, I think that's, that's one of the biggest lessons that I feel right now is really, um, portrays well to society right now. I totally agree. Be kind. Yeah. <laughs> and Sumi, what's what's something that you want to do personally that you just haven't been able to do yet? Well, um, my biggest dream growing up was to be a pop star, right? But then my second dream after that was to be on Broadway. Nice. So I've I've, I've done some uh, musical theater uh, professional jobs in Japan, but I hope to be able to do some musical theater in the States someday as well. Okay, now I want to ask you one more thing. Okay, so besides that, what's another future goal of yours that you want to achieve in your life? Uh, that has nothing to do with a career? Yeah, it could be anything, just a future goal that that you want to achieve besides what you mentioned. I want to be a mom of four. (laughs) Oh, there we go. (laughs) Why four? I want to have have lots of kids. I grew up, I was an only child for a little while, for 10 years. And then my mother had a a child later on. But um, I always wanted a big family, a big, happy family. And uh, I think the more the merrier. So I really hope that I can have a lot of kids. Yeah. I love hearing that. Sumi, I (laughs) want to thank you so much for, you know, taking time in your schedule to join me on Beyond the Lines. I mean, it was super fun hearing your insights. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) So looking forward to you visiting Hawaii when the Corona thing uh, finishes. Okay. Yes, yes, definitely. I hope to meet you in person someday soon. Hopefully sooner than later. Yes, definitely. Thank you, Sumi. Thank you so much, Rusty. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. I hope that Sumi and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.